All right, guys, this is the Matty Ice Show. Um, I'm obviously Matty Ice. We're live right now at Salt Mine Studios where Lil Wayne has recorded multiple albums here, where Kodak Black has recorded lots of music here. He even shot the Closer music video here, which is one of my favorite Kodak tracks. Pretty dope. Um, I just chopped it up with Zach Salter. We got some stuff coming as well. But we're here today for Steezy season. Um, I've been talking to Steezy for the past month. We've been trying to get this interview in. I've been traveling a lot. He's been on the move doing his thing with music. And today is the day that we're making this happen. Yes, sir. Uh, I had to bring a bottle for you, bro. Um, Appreciate you. So we got Vion. So I'm gifting uh, Steezy season with a bottle of Vion. That's for you. Um, just to kind of celebrate. Because I know you've got projects coming. Music out right now. Yes, sir. And um, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and your team. Um, let's shout out the videographer here today as well. Oh, uh, yeah. 24-7. You yeah, know. 24/7. Hey, I will say this. He came in with some gear, bro, because this thing is looking very cinematic in here today. We got a couple cameras shooting. We got the audio going, so I already yeah. know. Um, does he shoot videos as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Videos, documentaries, weddings, anything you need. I'm assuming he's done some of your videos. Oh, yeah. Which videos? Oh, man, all of them. Shoot, what we got? We got Notorious. We got Don't Slip. We got uh, Tunnel Vision. A whole bunch of stuff, man. Got you. Yeah, we actually know each other since we were kids, and... We kind of separated due to like schools, then we linked back up and it was, it was all up. So let me hit you with this question then since we're kind of on this. Um, I work with a specific videographer, content creator, and I know how important it is for me to work with that specific person. Oh, yeah. His name is Weasel. What is it, um, how important do you think it is to work with um, a videographer, a content creator to have that relationship? Because I think a lot of people don't understand the value of that. Yeah, I think it's very important because you guys get each other and chemistry is big. Um, when you work with a, a random uh, videographer, you don't really know how they move. You might not agree with some of their stuff. But when you're working with somebody you have a connection with, it's kind of it's kind of easier because the energy's there, the vibe, that chemistry. You guys can like bounce ideas off of each other. You know what I mean? Not only that, me and him are so close. Like he can stay at my house for a couple of days, and we can get ideas together and shoot stuff. I can't have a random cameraman at my house for sure. You know what I mean? For so sure. It's it's huge to have that connection. I mean. Don't get it wrong, working with other people is good too just for the marketing and you know what I mean, you get those other fans from those other uh, videographers and stuff, but having one that you're comfortable with and does the majority of your stuff is big because they get you, you know what I mean, they get your vision. Facts. Where are you from, Steve? I'm from Arizona, born and raised. Born and raised. Yes, sir. Which part? Uh, Chandler, Arizona to be exact, over on the east side. Chandler, Arizona, born and raised. Yeah. When did you tap into the music industry? Man, well... I got the name Steezy. They used to call me DJ Steezy because I would go to all the uh, athletic events. My older cousins would be freestyle rapping and stuff, and I'd be making the beats. So I, I used to beatbox with my mouth a lot. And then uh, as I got older, sports was it for me. And as soon as I got in trouble with the law, uh, one of my good friends, he was doing uh, after parties. I got the opportunity to do um, R.I.P. Mac Miller's tour, Blue Slide Park tour. We went on tour with him. Tyga, YG's first Wait, you tours. Tour with Mac Miller? Yeah. And Tyga? Yeah, we were doing their after parties. Wow. Oh, yeah. And um, that right there kind of opened my eyes to the music industry. This is real now. Yeah, because we were backstage meeting these people, and I kind of had the image. Well, I've always had the fly image with the look. And every time we would go to these shows from New York to Boston and Cali to Las Vegas, they'd always think I was the artist or about to get on stage or something. I'm like, nah. And as I got home one time, I was like, bro, everybody's telling you, like, they think you're an artist. Why don't you tell your story? And that's where it came from. So I just started telling myself, I was probably about 22, 23. So a lot of your raps and your verses, lyrics are coming really just about your life in general. Oh, yeah, everything. Everything. You're not just making up a song about a story. No, 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 no. I've, I've had plenty of people say, like, let me write for you. And I'm not against it. Like, if you want to write a hook for me, I'll look over it, you know? I feel like if someone writes for me and doesn't know me, it's going to be fabricated. I take my music serious on a level, like, I'm not, I, I tell everybody, I'm not a freestyle rapper. I will for fun on some crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, because I would invite you to the, come to the competition and win yeah. 10000 Yeah, exactly. Maddie yeah, Ice Competition, <laughs> Battle <laughs> Arena. It's going $10,000. But it's, it's like poetry to me, because everything I'm writing now is a story, and I'm talking about everything I've been through or what I'm going through. Got you, man. Um, okay, so we're in Arizona. I've been here for nine years now. Um, I'm from Illinois. So I've gotten a pretty good idea of what the Arizona industry is, the culture here. It is a good culture. Yeah. Um, my question for you is this. Being here in Arizona for as long as you have, born and raised, um, who are some of the people you've seen come and go, and who are some of the staples that you've seen that have actually been able to um, stick? OK. 
Okay, see, I'm a lot older than a lot of these artists, but uh, what was the dude's name that got signed to the game? Richie Evans? Richie Evans, for sure. It's interesting to hear that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? That you're hearing about right now that you know about? Oh, yeah, uh, the homegirl Jada Pink. Okay. You know what I mean? I knew her before she started doing the music and stuff. She's real humble. She got that it factor. You know what I'm saying? We need that out here. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe, like, I, I respect Futuristic. I just feel like his style's not for everybody. Yeah, and he's I mean? kind of been involved in more business. Business-wise? Yeah. <laughs> Zach's great. Yeah. What? That boy is a brain buster. He's smart. He knows exactly what he's doing, and I love how he's making it accessible for his uh, his book. platform. Yeah. That F, that F stuff, you know what I mean? He's like, oh, you want a future? Come on. India. You want? You need this? I got you. You know what I mean? He's letting artists know there's a spot to go safely for you to learn how to grow yourself. For sure. Yeah, and his um his team um he has support the homies management. I'm working yep. with George. His yep, manager. I follow their stuff. Yeah. yeah the, Zach's done a great thing. He's definitely um. A legend here in Arizona. Definitely give, he's give done, his flowers. He's a legend. He's done a lot of big things. There's a lot of good artists here right now. Sincerely Collins is still one of the, my favorite artists yeah, here in Arizona. Yeah. Um, Chris Coke is an incredible artist here in Arizona. Yeah, I just stumbled um, across him on your show. Yeah, he's yeah. great. But Arizona's doing its thing right now. Um, hopefully, you're going to be the next staple to come out of here. Yes, sir. What um, what music? Are you dropping something coming up soon? Um, I just dropped a single uh, two weeks ago called 11 and it's a it's a song definitely subject and based around club 11 in south beach miami so it's not 11 11 here no nah. because we got 11 11 here but yeah, we got 11 yeah. in miami okay. yeah i'm talking about the one in miami okay ross but, the, uh, rick ross the residence there oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, last time i was there he pulled up to the club at like performed i don't know three in the morning yeah, and weird. i'm just like wow this is you know that's miami that's Miami. But Vegas is the same thing. When he goes, he has a residency at Drake's yeah. in Vegas, and he doesn't get out until two thirty. Yeah. They want to, they want the, the club wants to sell their liquor, and they want to, you know, yeah, yeah, they sure. keep you in the club. Exactly. Don't leave, right. stay. The headliner's yeah. gonna be on soon. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I put that song out, um, and that's doing pretty good. You know, just just drop it. I'm honestly, I was in the studio for a while, put music out. We're only getting older. I had a, I had a thought that you know, music is art. And all of us gatekeep our music and think we need to hold on to it. And you never know. Like, if we're spending all those hours and that energy making it and writing it down and recording it. Put it out. You know what I mean? Make a catalog. If, you, if you're not a prolific artist like, like these other ones, like Drake and all these other people that are timely putting out albums because they can, because their fan base is waiting, cool. But if you're out there trying to grow your fan base, give them, give them material. Give them stuff to listen to always give, keep them on their toes. And that's where I'm at. I'm dropping almost every month, visuals every month. You know what I mean? We're doing everything. So more the single route and the video route than like pushing tapes? Single routes, I put out EPs, like four, tr four to six pack track EPs, subject based. And we put those out. It's, it's singles, it's EPs. It's almost taking it back to like the mixtape days. Do you have an album up? Yeah, I got plenty of albums out. I dropped what? What did we drop? Two albums this year already? Three EP albums, uh, full albums. Uh, I think I have one full album out, and then the other ones are all EPs and singles. Yes. What's your biggest song in your catalog? In your entire catalog? Oh, right now? As Let I'm me ask you this. What's Steezy's favorite song mm. that you've made, and then what is the number one song in your catalog that the fans demand? Um, I'd have to say, right now, when I look at my numbers, it's speeding. We put out a song like on alternative rock. I was playing around the studio and I was kind of just Futuristic riffing. on the same thing. Yeah, I was kind of just rifting. But everybody in the studio heard it and they were like, nah, bro, this could be on movies, video games, everything. And we kind of put it out and it, it got it got more listens than like most of my old stuff real quick. So I'd say that one, just because it's more um, broadly accepted. You know what I mean? I, I do put a little Jay-Z eight bar verse at the end. But the whole song is more alternative rock, rifting, singing. And then my favorite, ooh, that's a hard question because I have hundreds of songs and I never like to do my babies like that. <laughs> Lyrically, I would say 88 Keys off of I Don't Do Drugs, I Am Drugs just because it was a metaphor for 88 Keys on the piano okay. and music. And that's what I was rapping about, but I was tying in kilos and cocaine 
to bring people in it. And it sounds like that's what I'm talking about. Fact. But I'm talking about the piano and the music Fact. and my plug dropping off a beat and Fact. you know what I mean? Fact. And it turned into when I listen to that, that's a great piece of art right there. You Fact. Know? So for me, yeah, lyrically that's my favorite one right there, yeah. What about um maybe some artists that you have worked with? Is there any bigger artist that you have a song out with right now? Um or in the past? I did a song not in the stu well were we in the studio? Uh, the first time I started doing music, um, R.I.P. Big Y, he was, he's an OG from uh, Inglewood, California. And I went down to California with one of my friends, and I met him. He's the one who put together Cali Swag Dish. And um, I met Young from Cali Swag Dish. He still does music. Shout out, Young. He was on my first video I ever did, Beat Me in the Lobby. We went down there. Um, they showed me love. I recorded in their studio. We uh, recorded that feature, they did the video. It was all love, you know what I mean? Other than that, um, my boy who does beats is from Cali. He worked with Problem, so you know how they'll make beats, put uh, people on hooks and stuff like that. I ended up buying a beat from my boy that I liked, and he was like, you know that's Problem on that beat? And I was like, nah, he was like, yeah, you good, that's your beat. And then I had him on there just off the humbug, right. you know what I mean? And then this one song, Eleven, that I just dropped, we honestly did it off some social media stuff. So, you know, Jamie Foxx was sick for a while. Right. He didn't. He wasn't posting anything. And then he posted just a, a play around video. He was on the piano and he had posted a hook. Like last night I was in Miami. I was on my Uncle Luke. And it was just like a, a reel he had posted, like on the story. Luke Records. Yeah, he was just, he was playing around type. And I took that and I sent it to my beat guy. I was like, can you make a beat around this? And we kind of like play with it. And that's what we did. And we kind of like put him on the hook as like he was on the social media, you know what I mean? And so those three people right there are the only real like names that people would probably know that are on my music. Other than that, I just really been some local, my homies, and then just me. So is that legal to have Jamie Foxx on the track with it? Because it's a Instagram video sound, I think so. You know what I mean? That when it's not third party. It might not hurt you to get in a legal battle with Jamie Foxx either. That's what my producer said. <laughs> he said, I asked him that. I was like, can we use this? He was like, yeah, because it's not, because it was a video on Instagram. Right. He was like, but it might not hurt you, like you said, if something comes up and there is. If he hits you with a cease and assist. The Club 11's already, they was liking my shit. Oh, they were liking already? Yeah. So they already seen it, they with the movement. All we need is Jamie Foxx to be like, you know what, let me come do the real, the real hook for you. Who are the biggest DJs in 11? Because I feel like when that song drops, you gotta get it to them. Man. If the song's about 11, they gotta be playing it in 11. You damn right, to be honest. I'd be, I'd be tapping in with those DJs, even if you gotta take care of them, bro. Yeah, for real. Get that song playing in that club, bro. I never Maybe they'll make some way. reels, like have them make a reel with your song on the, for the club. Look and post it on that. their page, bro. Yeah, figure out what DJ. Hey, if you're listening, DJ's at 11 in South Beach, Miami. Miami. Tap in. We're going to get the music played. Shoot them. Man, it's going to be a whole movie out there. Y'all got a theme song now for Club 11. Yeah. Did, you, did you see, um, and I don't know much about, you know, we, we obviously know much about what, what happened to Tupac, but today, um, or yesterday, KVD um, was arrested. 27 years later for actually the murder of Tupac. They're yeah. charging him with murder. I've seen Tupac. that. That's crazy. He did man. like a bunch of interviews. You know, he was on Vlad's show. He was on every podcast you can think of besides mine. Um, you never know. Yeah, and, and honestly, he was doing a lot of interviews. Um, do you know anything about, have you heard of anything, anything what happened with that? Or? No, I mean, I was young when that happened. Uh, I'm just talking about specifically a Keepy's arrest. Like you, oh, no. I, I heard about it through social media, of course, like everybody else, but I didn't read into it, no. It's crazy. 27 years later, and this is a guy who was arrested in Las Vegas where Tupac was murdered. On Koval. And he was, this guy's still in Vegas. I just think that's, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, and I think that if the police charge this guy, they got to have some solid shit out. Oh, yeah, they got to. Especially 27, years. 27 years later. Yeah. I still think it's going to be hard to convict him based on the 27 years, but they have to have something so instrumental that they got him. Yeah, I agree. It's wild, bro. I definitely agree. Wild, bro. Um, Tupac's right, sister came I'm out. Right, Tupac. His sister came out today, and she was really happy about the arrest. Mm -hmm. and, um, obviously, it's I seen Jada. P, uh, Jada. Uh, yep. She she said something about it. Jada, Jada Pinkett, Smith. Yeah, yeah or Jada Pinkett Smith. Yep. Yeah, she was like, um, this will start to you know get some closure here. Um, 
so I thought that was that was great that finally there's some justice or justice is happening yeah. for uh, for Tupac. That's for the longest everybody didn't know. Right. Yeah. People, you know, all the conspiracies. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like all these conspiracies can kind of get put to rest. I would think once. I guess they're saying once this guy starts talking, though, it's going to get pretty pretty interesting. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, mm-hmm. Are you are you moving around state to state to do shows? Are you pretty much performing here? Um, that is my biggest battle. And if you're watching this, tap in, man. Um, the industry is an up and down, dirty, slimy ass industry. Trust man, me, bro. Because I'm just <laughs> you could be getting a hit up for people for shows, and it's not a show, and you don't know what's real. Look. If y'all got shows, you got a company, you got a promo company, whatever y'all got, reach out to me, I'll tap in. I'm doing shows everywhere. It doesn't matter. You want features, I do features for free. I'm not with none of that. The biggest thing for me, the biggest battle is shows. Meaning like what? You're you're getting you're dealing with janky promoters or janky promoters and where to find the real promoters to do the shows. Because a lot of these promoters are like, I'll oh, pay this much and then you can perform. And it's like you're performing eight eight performers before the dude comes on and you paid like six hundred, eight hundred. Gotcha. Well, let me say let me let me tell you the Matty Ice Fest is coming up um January twentieth. We're gonna have performers, but like what you just said, you know, we, we just had twenty seven performers the last festival we just did for the Bel Air sixteen bar challenge. Um but we gave our performers ten minute slots each and I had the venue for like twelve hours so I was able to move things yeah, around. Yeah. It. Um but we'd like to have you on the Matty Ice Festival. Let's talk about that off, off yeah. record. Um but yeah. I can promise you with how we do things, um, we run things A, A, A plus, bro. I got a name here in the city. Yes, um, sir. There's not one person I've done bad business with in the city. I'm right on camera and I can say that. Um, so I, I can tell you um, we do good stuff. But not only that, not to talk about myself or my show a lot, but we're trying to bring an industry here to Arizona. Um, you know, I'm tied in with Maybach Music. I'm tied in with African Music. I'm tied Maybach in, Music. I'm tied in with bigger companies. Um, Ross, I'm very close with. And his, man, his manager is my manager. Yeah. Um, so you know, we're trying to bring the culture here to Arizona. We're trying to get guys like you to get seen out of Arizona. Yes, sir. Um, in bigger markets, mm-hmm. this interview will hopefully help. And um, and then you never know what happens. You know, somebody might see this interview, they might like your vibes. Somebody might see you at the show coming up, they might like your vibes. Um, it, it's all full circle, bro. So, yes, sir. Um, networking. Networking is really what it's about. I mean, look, I, I started off this platform almost five years ago. Um, I was signed to Bang Energy. I didn't know. You know, Ross was an was one of my idols at that point. Yeah. Was somebody I looked up to. Was somebody that was like, holy fuck, I listened to him every day in high school. And, Facts. And, you know, this was, this was, it was a big moment for me. When Ross started following me and I met Ross for the first time, I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, I wasn't starstruck, but I was a little shook. Like, this is really real. Bro. Yeah, for sure. So now when I meet him, it's a whole different, you know, now it's like this, I understand everything. But yeah. like, still, bro, um, the hard work, the dedication you put into your craft, having a good spirit like you, um, and being positive, Yes, sir. It's only going to take you far because a lot of people in this industry, they have an ego. They're cocky. They, yes, they, sir. they handle their business like shit. Mm-hmm. It will catch up with you. Yes, sir. This industry is very big but very small. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody knows somebody. I guarantee you we can go in each other's contacts and yeah. I can pull five people out that you yeah. know and you can call them right now and I can do the same thing with you. 100%. So everything moves full circle. And when you fuck somebody over, when you do bad business, um, it's going to come back at you. Bro. Yep, yep. So I think that's... Um, it's so important to handle handle your handle your stuff with integrity, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, so producers wise, I always like to talk about the producers. Producers are very important, just like how a videographer mm-hmm. is a content creator. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a specific producer yes. that you want to shout out that you're ta- that you're tapping? Shout out T dot aka Saint Levant, man. He and shout out my boy Steph G. He just graduated uh, fifteen hundred and nothing production school out in California. Good for him, man. Oh. Um, he just got his degree for that. Um, and then my boy Saint, he's been doing beats. He made he's made majority of all my beats. Uh, shout out Teddy also for sure. You know what I mean? Them three are all over my music since day one. You cool. know what I mean? And I, lo- I love using people I know because they get my sound. Do you um? Do you have a certain artist in Arizona, specifically here in Arizona, that you want to make a song with that? You, maybe you haven't met that artist yet that uh, maybe you have met him or her um, um yeah of course that's easy that's Jada like me and her we didn't kicked it before the music and all that kind of stuff she's a cool soul Jada's a good I mean? person yeah she's a good person like I know the real her and the real her y'all get to see the camera her and all that stuff. No, she's a big heart. She's yes, she does. She has a huge heart. And we've talked about it, but she's busy too. You know what I mean? It, it's all about timing. For sure. But definitely doing a song with her because I don't, I don't have any songs with a female at all. 
and that would be dope to get a female on track for sure. So Jada. Jada, yep. Let's go with one more. Wouldn't be wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be shy to say get one from uh, from Rico or Futuristic. It would for me and Futuristic to do a song. I think he's so versatile that he could change his style up and not do the whole. I just don't see him recording a lot right now. I, I, oh yeah, he's maybe got two kids. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. could. I think you and Rico. I think that might be something to do. I think yeah. he, I think I, I've been hearing about his name a lot. Yeah, my boy mess. My boy does his videos. Uh, helps with the treatments on his videos. So the circle is there. You know what I mean? They they wear this. They they got a clothing line that they they wear clothes and all that kind of stuff. Man, it's all like you said. The circles are all tapped in and small out here. How about, um, have you heard of Merkham's on here? Yeah, that's my boy. I met him in the studio, and then I met him before, a long time ago. Like I said, when we were doing shows, he was one of those artists, too, that was out there doing shows with, like, Rico and Futuristic and all of them. So, yeah, I met him. I would definitely do a song with him. Me and him talk on social media. Yeah, I, I dropped to Cypher today with Breezeway, his, you know, Bryce Breeze's manager. Mm -hmm. um, Merkham's was the first act on the Cypher, so Merkham's is, I've had Merkham's on the show a few times already. Yeah. He's obviously, you know, doing his thing, and he's been working really hard here in Arizona the past few For years. For sure. Here in Arizona and anywhere else. That boy be moving. He traveled, yeah, he traveled. That boy be moving, give him his flowers. Markham's, you heard me? <laughs> Markham's, big yeah, Mark. Big Mark, yeah. Shout out Markham's, bro. That, Their whole man. team over there. Yeah, uh, Chris man. Koch signed over there, too, HB Young and Zach the Mac. Um, a lot of guys over there, bro. Okay. Um, a lot of guys over there. They got Glowy, uh, Glowy Muchacho, uh, Ricardo Nunez. Slime Life. Who am I missing, bro? I feel like I'm missing somebody over there. You gotta, you gotta shout out G Money, Chop Cheese. Chop Cheese! <laughs> <laughs> shout out the Chop Cheese. Okay, so we got Merkham's, Jada Pink, Rico. Yep. Um, I think all those can definitely happen. Facts. Let's make it happen. Y'all hear that? You know what I'm saying? We're on Maddie Ice Live right now. Let's link it together. You know what I'm saying? Let's work, baby. We got we got Salt Mine Studio. We got, we got opportunity, baby. This is opportunity. Opportunity's calling right now. So uh, it could be the next big song, too, right? What's your style like, bro? Because, you know, I'm, I'm listening. You just named a few different artists that have a few different styles. What's your style? Um, I listen to a lot of R.P., Nipsey Hussle, uh, Currency, a lot of Larry June. Um, so when you hear my beats, it's, it's real smooth. And, okay. you know what I mean? Um, you can ride to it, smoke to it. Um, but definitely very versatile because my music is everywhere. I got, like I said, alternative music. I got stuff for females. I got stuff for the club. So... Yeah, very versatile. I listen to all those people. I mean, I feel like my style is somewhere in between Currency and Larry June-ish. I just had um, Killa Twan, who's still signed to All Money and Nipsey's label. All um, Money, yeah. yeah. So when yeah. Killa Twan was on the show, he did a crazy freestyle. You should watch that. He was fucking insane. He was real close to Nipsey. I heard a lot of stories about yeah. him. Um, crazy, bro. Sad to lose him. Who, who do you think, um, right now, are you listening to the most? Who's your favorite artist? Um, I'm definitely going with my boy Larry June. Okay. Because um, I stumbled across him a little, ooh, couple years ago. Maybe like six years ago. And um, he wasn't even big yet. But I knew it was coming just because, like, his work ethic, the videos, the sound, the industry needed something smooth. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he brings. I mean, I listen to him a lot. I mean, definitely still Lil Wayne. All, all the older guys, you know what I mean, that we grew up listening to. I listen to them all the time. Lil Baby, I mean, all those fools. Who's your number one artist? Like here, if you were, if you were to... Dead or Alive? If you were to pass away, mm -hmm. and in your coffin, they can play one artist forever, who's it going to be? Ooh, Sade. Okay. Sade, for sure. That energy. You said that right away. Shot that that energy is going to have me in there. My, my, my soul and my uh, spirit going to be in there jamming, baby. Okay. Got you. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Shout out, Shot. Hey, for real, baby. Okay, now who, who's the number one artist to ever do it? And I can tell you mine right now off the bat, and I still would stay this. I can still state this. But who's your number one artist to ever do it? We got to put everything in there, show. Dead or alive? We got to put shows. We got to put everything in number there. Number one artist. I'm going Lil Wayne. A lot of people would say that. I'm gonna go Tupac. Okay. And I can say why I can say Tupac, and I think I can. I, I've sold myself on this. We're 27 years later. Tupac died at what? 25 years old. Mm hmm We're 27 years later. You've been 52 now. Um. His body of work, up to 25, the amount of songs that he dropped, but not just songs, quality songs, the albums that we got up to 25. 
it's already an entire body of work for a whole career. For sure. And I think because of that, because of the body of work that he dropped before, imagine if he had 27 more years. So because of what he dropped up to 25, to me, he's the best ever. Yeah. And no one has been able to do what he did in that short of a time. I get that. But Wayne's still around doing his thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Wayne is a legend. And Wayne could go down. People could say, yes, he's the best ever to do it. Yeah. I can't, there's an argument there. Yeah. But to me, based on the fact Tupac passed at 25 and all the mu- all the legendary songs, bro, the hell, all the legendary songs, Changes, Hail mm-hmm. Mary, Darren Mott, yes, we can go on yeah, and on. Brenda got a big, mm-hmm. and all of them, bro, right? Mm-hmm. These are all classics that, that is- we're still listening to and resonating with yeah. 27 yeah. years later. Makes sense. Because of that, he's my number one artist. I hear what you're saying. Because not all Lil Wayne's music is resonating. It's just like the body of work we got yeah. like 25, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't think people are really realizing that albums, he was the ahead singles. Of his time, what he was talking about, the movement he was trying and to do. He was do. really writing his shit. Mm-hmm. He was moving. No auto tune. Mm-hmm. None of that. None of that special effect. And I can say, I can sit here and make an argument for Nas, too, but I'm not, you know, not, that's, that's, that's hard. I respect Nas. But Nas, it. Nas, yes, Nas, Nas uh, who said this recently? Um, Joe Budden said that Nas is like one of the only artists to keep it like hip hop. He never like wavered. He never Ooh, did any corny that's shit. That's a, yeah. He kept it real. Like Nas was the only one to never go wavered. Pop. Never he wavered. Go rock. You right. It's hard to be hip hop. Nas bro. was the first concert I ever went to. Um, I I've hope never I, seen Nas live. Fourteen years old. I'm 36. 22 years ago this was. 14. For a birthday present, my mom got me and two of my friends a ticket to the House of Blues to Nas to the Stillmatic show when he had the orange Still lords. Stillmatic. Yeah, that was 22 years ago, by the way. That was, uh, I, was four, I was 14 years old when that dropped. I, I went to go buy the Sean John. Sean John, back in the day, used to have it, all the velour jumpsuits, yeah. bro. Remember? Oh, yeah. And each a, an each a. Have, Remember each a? Yes, sir. I had all the velour yes, jumpsuit. Yeah. Rock wear, Rock all wear. that. That, that farm. Yeah, okay, all so that. That was, <laughs> that was way back in the day, right? Uh, FUBU, all that. Um, but those are the brands, bro, and that's, uh, what was the other one, too? There was one more that I used to always rock. Drive me crazy now. Shaw John, Fat Farm, South Pole. There's one more, bro, that was unbelievable that I, I can't think uh, of. Academics. Nope. Uh, Keep going. Pele Pele. Nope. Uh, this is a harder one, too. This was one of the ones that people wore a lot, but it still was a little bit. I, I, I'm lost. Because I know you ain't talking about fever. Nope. Mm-hmm. Damn, it was a whole bunch. That's crazy. I can't think of it. It's going to drive me crazy. Yeah, I'm search for jumpsuits all like. But I used to buy the Sean John uh, velour jumpsuits inspired by Nas, actually. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> Those were comfortable. With the, little cur- the cursive right there on the thing. I had the tank top one with the blue shirt. We need to bring it back. We need to bring back the floor. Somehow, can we do that? Oh, the winner's coming up. Let's bring, bring back, back the, the jumpsuits. jumpsuits. Let's do that. Let's do that. Hold on. Hey, Matty I said it first. Let's do that. Don't let nobody take this. If this comes back this winter, he said it. I'm we starting it right here. Yeah. starting the trend. Oh, um, Okay. There you go. So it's crazy. Sean John, that's 22 years ago. So look how successful Diddy is. 22 years later, um, we're talking about Diddy, man. We're talking about Sean John still. Bad boy, bad boy. Take that, take that. Wow, bro. And what about Arizona? You know, uh, talk about uh, finish up with. What do you want to bring to Arizona, uh, and uh, where you see Arizona going? Sure. Um, we're right here in Arizona right now. Um, you're an artist that's from Arizona. Yes, sir. So, what are you trying to accomplish here in the state of Arizona? And then, what do you see yourself mm. doing out of Arizona? That's why uh, I like that we connected. Um, you said it earlier, bringing an industry buzz or look to a- Arizona. It's been a long time coming to where people like in your in your field of work that are coming here to do that. Because for a while, it was nothing. It was just like, I've been to a and meetings, and I'm like, have you ever heard of an Arizona artist? They don't even say futuristic. They're just like, no. You know what I mean? Been Atlantic, all that kind of stuff. So for Arizona to start to get put on, that's beautiful. And that's all my whole goal is as an artist to make Arizona another prolific spot for music because there's a lot of talent out here that's being overlooked. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, for me, outside of here, definitely growing as a man and as an artist, putting out art to the world my music, if you listen to it, can teach young motherfuckers how to stay out of trouble, be fly, get money the right way, you know what I mean? Investing in shit, portfolios, all that kind of stuff. I'm not just out here rapping about always fucking on some females, buying expensive stuff, 
tricking off money, killing motherfuckers. Yeah, we got enough of that. Yeah, that shit goes down. But not everybody needs to always listen to that. So outside of here, just being known for more than just this local artist, the I want to be worldly. You know what I mean? To where like people are like, oh, Steezy talking about some shit. I can learn from him. You know what I mean? I like that, bro. I think um, right now there's a lot of stuff going on in Arizona. There's a lot of different content creators here in Arizona. Um, platforms are coming here in Arizona and doing their thing. And I think yeah, the most right. important thing is this, is we just need people to be talked about. Um, so just get your name out there. Do shows. Do these, you know, obviously the tournament's not your lane, but a lot of these, you know, even the tournaments have gotten, like, we got Chris Coke buzzing here in Arizona like crazy. We Definitely. Just, we posted this video on TikTok yesterday. It has over 1,000 comments and 500,000. Yeah, that battle thing you put out went viral. Yeah, so, bro. So, but, but it's like Arizona? Battle rap? What? But these are guys that, you know, yeah, we put it out there, but we needed the contestants to come do and shine and, and rap, right? Mm -hmm. So they're the ones that shine. Um, we just provided the platform here. Yeah. Um, but what it is, is it's like doing something, bro. If you do something, people are gonna talk about you. Like, look, you heard the Chris Coke freestyle, you saw it. Um, you don't even know who Chris Coke was maybe a couple weeks I ago. Did. Now you know who he is. Yeah. Um, so it's just about getting out. Shout out Chris Coke. Chris Coke. Um, we're gonna have him on the 21st on pay-per-view, Dylan Jacob. Uh-oh. Crazy. Y'all heard what he said? He said on pay-per-view. It's pay-per-view. He said he's gonna take Dylan's head off, but on pay-per-view. The contract we can't do that. Um, we talking Mayweather here. There you go. But we're doing we're doing uh, the rap arena. So make sure you follow the rap arena on Instagram, um, on TikTok, the rap arena. Um, a lot of stuff will be will be coming with that. And then we got the Matty Ice Fest January twentieth. We're gonna have live performances. We're gonna have vendors. We're gonna have. Um, oh, let me let me let me talk my shit a little bit. Talk your um, shit, Matty Ice. We got, we got three judges. Um, our lead judge is the 13-year NBA future Hall of Famer, Baron that. Davis. Yes, sir. B. Diddy. Um, uh, B. Diddy's involved. Talked to B. Diddy yesterday. Baron Davis is going to be our lead judge. Confirmed. We got Rum Nitty, one of the most respected battle rappers in the Damn world. Right. Rum Nitty. Um, he won 150000 from Drake. He is going to be our second judge. Our third judge is Aswin Benjamin, who's actually signed to Futuristics uh, Management Company. Okay. And also Aswin Benjamin is Grammy nominated, Emmy nominated, is fresh off winning $25,000 mm. from Joyner Lucas and Bobby Schmurda, and he's mm. won the La Russell Challenge as well. Jeez. So we got, a, we got a panel here that's- Give me his flowers. Great panel, I'm really excited to bring Barry Davis into this. And then we're looking for, obviously, performers to come on. We're picking and choosing the right ones. Um, and then we're gonna have the contestant end of it all, the vendor end of it all, um, networking, food, drinks, the whole nine yards. This is gonna be at Stratus Event Center. Um, hopefully you can be up there. Stratus Event Center, Mid Lab, if you don't know. Yep. Now you know. Stratus Event Center, um, it's gonna be a very big event. Uh, we're expecting to have over 2,000 people there. We will have over 2,000 people there. Uh, Great venue too. Yep, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, Steezy, before we end the interview, um, Tell everybody one song you want them to go listen to right now so they can judge you on that one. If they're going to be one song, they're going to go to Apple Music right now and type in Steezy Season. What is that first song you want them to hear? Man, y'all go get 88 Keys, man, if y'all want to hear some lyrics, man. You know, go get 88 Keys. Y'all want to hear real rap raw? That's it. No auto-tune, no pump faking, no fabrication. That's it right there. 88 Keys. 88 Keys. Steezy Season, 88 Keys, and then... Give us something that's coming that we can kind of hold our hat on. Right Man, now. we got 11 that just dropped two weeks ago. Y'all go ahead and get that 11. You know what I'm saying? That just dropped. We got more albums dropping. I got something coming out on Thanksgiving called Thankful. It's a real conscious uh, single everybody can relate to about being thankful. Gratification. You know what I mean? Everybody. Gratification. Thank you, man. Sure, nice. yo. Gratification. Steezy season. Um, great dude, great artist. I, I genuinely rock with him. Where can we find you? Man, find me anywhere. Any social media, Steezy Season, Instagram, Steezy Season dot him, because I'm him. Any uh music platform, just type in Steezy Season. S-T-E-E-Z-Y season. You know what I mean? Come get me, man. Come find me. Download me, stream me, baby. Hey, let me make one suggestion right now. We got the song eleven in Miami for Club Eleven. But you know what? I just thought of an idea. Maybe maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but I'll throw it out there. We got 1111 11 here in Arizona. Maybe we can make a second track, 1111. 11. So I got, got you, 1111. 11. So we, we got 11 in Miami. Let's get 1111 11 here in Arizona. Shout out Bootleg Cut. Bootleg Cab, 1111. I got y'all. I'm going to run that back. JT Holmes going to help me push it. Modern Rockstars, we're going to get this shit fucking cracked. Shout out Modern Rockstars. So you, there you go. We might have the second version of it, 1111, 11, coming here for Arizona. 11 in Miami, we do in both coasts. 
This is Steezy Season, the Matty Ice Show. I'm busted out the Vion for my dog. Ah, let's make it happen. Let's go. Ah. 